Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. Are you interested in virtual reality? Have you tried or do you own a VR headset? Do you use it in Flight Sim? Navigraph recently did a community survey and have published the results. I'll leave a link in the notes below. That showed a considerable growth in the use of VR in flight simulation, from around 3% in 2017 to 11% in 2018. Personally, I'm an avid VR user, so having just recently purchased an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, I was obviously keen to give it a test. I'm going to be using the HTC Vive headset with the RTX 2080 Ti. All major flight sim platforms are VR compatible in one form or another, but for today's test I'm going to be using Prepared and their latest version 4.4. And I'm going to be comparing Prepared's native VR against Fly Inside version 1.97. The RTX 20 series of graphics cards have been much touted by NVIDIA for their speed, AI, ray tracing and other capabilities, but I must say for flight simulation I've been somewhat underwhelmed in terms of performance. It is definitely better and faster than my previous graphics card, the GTX 1080. I also hope to be releasing another video in the not too distant future showing the GTX 1080 which is my previous graphics card, measuring up against the RTX 2080 Ti in a non-VR in P3D version 4.4 with various scenery settings, low, medium and high. Now let's have a quick look at our settings. I'm using the latest NVIDIA graphic drivers and for the stress test I've tried to put together the toughest one I could think of. I've got a full suite of Orbix software including base, Global and Vector, as well as Netherlands True Earth. Netherlands True Earth is about 32,000 files in itself, so is the densest scenery area available for prepared. We're going to be using the A2A Comanche 250, which is a complex aircraft, and flying from Rotterdam, past Schiphol, and the Amsterdam built up area, and landing at Leestad. In addition, I'm using Active Sky for Prepared. Let's take a quick look at my Prepared settings. The config files have not been changed or modified in any way. Mesh resolution is at 5 meters and texture resolution is at 7 centimeters as recommended by Orbix. HDR lighting is not enabled as Fly Inside is not compatible with HDR. To measure the frame rate in VR I'm going to be using FPS VR which is available from Steam. So that's all the waffle out the way. Some of the results at the end of this are hard to interpret so if anybody's got any suggestions or recommendations or identify a setting maybe I've got wrong I'd appreciate you leaving it in the comments below. Thanks very much.
So those were the two flights. Bear in mind that what you see on screen due to the limitations of recording and what you experience in the VR headset is slightly different. Let's now have a look at the results. At first glance, it looks like Flyinside absolutely crushed prepared in this test. However, the reality is somewhat different. If anything, I would suggest that native VR was marginally smoother than Fly and Side was. Fly and Side from these results was certainly working harder, but that's no surprise, as Fly and Side is another layer on top of prepared, whereas native VR is built in. Looking at these results, it would indicate that Fly and Side was up to twice as fast as prepared native VR, but my experience in the headset that wasn't the case. Modern day VR headsets need around 90 frames per second to achieve a smooth user experience. Much less than that, it becomes very jerky very quickly and can induce motion sickness. The way that Fly Inside achieves this is something called a synchronous time warp. Hope I pronounced that right. Basically, what it does is it takes the frame, say 30 frames per second, and it multiplies or duplicates the frames and upscales them to try and achieve the 90 frames per second or more. I assume Prepared uses a similar technology. So going back to the results, I can only assume at this rate, because I don't know, is that the native Prepared VR results are the traditional frame rates achieved. And those reflected for fly inside are the upscaled frame rates achieved. Whilst admittedly as pure conjecture on my part, but you will have noticed on the prepared side by side test that there's a black border around the view. And this is in fact from the left lens view only. So is it that the frame count also is just from one lens? If that is the case, then arguably for a like by like comparison with fly inside we could double that frame rate so assuming that we could apply double the frame rate to prepared for a like for like with fly inside the results would look something like this fly inside shown in the blue and prepared native vr in the orange average frames per second for fly inside 67.1 and for prepared 65.2 it's also worth noting the number of drop frames from fly inside is substantially higher than that from prepared, 30 compared to 9. And perhaps this accounts for some of the variance in the frames per second recorded. The other interesting thing to note is the difference in CPU temperatures. Wow! 60 degrees for prepared, which is pretty average, and a really high 91 for fly inside shows you much how much harder that CPU is working. I was pleasantly surprised that uh, prepared was smoother than fly inside. If I had to opt for one right now, however, I'd opt for fly inside, even though it's a lower frames per second. And that's for one major reason. And that is that fly inside offers you the ability to import charts, maps, online flying portals such as vpilot etc into the virtual cockpit it also has the ability to world scale what this means is it allows you to make the cockpit a little bit larger or smaller because i did feel the prepared cockpit in the comanche was a little bit smaller than what it is in real life so i've plumbed for fly inside but only by a whisker once prepared an x-plane allow the importation of third-party charts and maps into the virtual cockpit, Fly Inside is going to have some real competition on its hands. Fly Inside have released their own flight simulator. I'll leave a link in the notes below. But it's my personal opinion since that time that development of and support for the VR Fly Inside application that I've been using has certainly slowed. Do you use VR? If so, what VR do you use? I'd be interested to know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications.
Coming up will be the 1080 verse 2080 in prepared version 4.4. Let's see how fast uh, the 2080 really is, as well as a review of some Orbic scenery. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.